Hello, ladies and germs. I suppose we can probably kill this welder. Um, always, always turn off your bottles. Always turn off your bottles. Okay. Uh, whew, I'm, I'm doing good, I tell you what here. Um, sticking with the theory of if it's not supposed to move, it shouldn't move. Um, and also sticking with the theory that diagonal things make stuff strong. I added a ton of diagonal things. <laughs> so two birds with one stone. I added just a crap load of diagonal stuff. Um, but I also was able to weed through all my scrap and basically use up all of my scrap without having to cut into a full stick. So I ended up with kind of a pretty little pattern, um, symmetrical depending on how you look at it. And it is incredibly, incredibly strong and incredibly rigid. I also welded on these big, gnarly, disastrously huge plates um, for the feet, big half inch hole there. That's gonna be a lag screw right into the floor. Actually, that's gonna be a, a pad that's got like, I don't know, eight or 10 screws around the perimeter, screwing that to the floor, and then that bolt going through the plate, that pad in the floor, so it'll be like thick. Okay, so I got big feet everywhere. Um, I have, I'm working outside and I have shimmed this whole unit to perfectly level. And then, like for instance today, <clears throat> I was able to get these pieces of angle iron in to support these rails. Now, one mode of thought here that I'm working with is it's extraordinarily important to think about what is square to what, case in point. This frame, this outside frame, although it is currently very level, it's on plane, it means nothing. This means nada. Um, in reality, it all comes down to these four points being perfectly in plane. So in theory, I kind of want to get those, I mean, if you could envision those rails perfectly in plane, like floating in air, like a mathematical theory, like, <laughs> you know, if I could magically support them mid-air, and get them just perfect and then somehow put this frame around those two rails floating perfectly and then basically weld them wherever they happen to be. Um, this is not going to flex at all so this frame is an established point whether it's twisted or not doesn't matter it's still just an established point and the key was to get these guys parallel and level to each other and then, like I said, tack them to the frame wherever they happen to be as long as they were in plane with each other. And I used, I think I showed you this before, this is my water level, and it's a tube with water in it, windshield washer fluid, and uh, if you hold the two ends up, the water in the tube is always level, exactly level, perfectly level. Um, it's, mass, it's the most accurate tool I own, actually, that tube of water. Um, by a lot. Um, so I was just able to hold it in these corners and level these four corners. So basically, in addition to the frame being wicked close to level, those rails are exactly level and more importantly, in plane with each other. So, um, cut a hole here. There's my motor mount. Motor fits through there and bolts to there. There's some still pictures of this. But, the big news today is this guy. This is like glass. It, it, this is so, I mean, this, this makes you want to get up and slap your mama. I mean, it's like, <laughs> so I notched, I notched everything. You can see there's the angle iron comes down. So when it comes down to this end, can I see it in the light maybe? You can see how it clears and in theory I have enough room here that you could have your fingers here and they might get well in theory I don't think they're gonna get smashed because I think the stop is gonna catch it before it goes all the way through but um, but basically your fingers at worst will get smashed not guillotined off so that's the best I can do um, 
this is incredible. This is just incredible. I'm so ridiculously, ridiculously happy with this. So uh, we'll have a lead screw coming through here. I've got to put a support to catch the bearing block, then a lead screw, another support bearing block, and then I've got to run the little connector thingy from here down to the lead screw to the nut on the lead screw. This is probably going to need some gussets in the corners, or what I'll probably do is wherever that nut mounts for the lead screw, I'll run some diagonals down there, or maybe a crisscross, so that that pull force, the nut pulling, will be transferred to the four corners. So I'm pulling from the bearing blocks as opposed to pulling the center of this. So hopefully that'll transfer force a little better. But at any rate, this will get whatever kind of diagonal gusseting and then one inch square tube do i have a piece yeah, this is nasty and rusted um there's yet another frame on top of this out of this one inch square tube and it'll go boom 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 probably every five six inches then an outside frame like this right and it'll be notched to miss the bolts because it's probably going to sit right about like that. And then onto that one inch steel frame, I'll have my deck. And then with the main deck screwed down with the screw heads recessed. And then another deck with the T tracks milled in it. And then another piece, which will be the sacrificial piece. And then the work piece on top of that. So it's just, it's just going to be neat and heavy and good. And I am, I just could not be any happier with this it is it's it's just it's incredible it's incredible widen these blocks to nine and a half inches so there's no it's just not going to rack this way it'll have enough weight that i don't think it's going to try to pull up either way um everything about this is so much better so next stage is uh finish this deck get the deck itself on it and then I can start running these uprights for the gantry I've probably I've actually got to weld the Z axis bracket first so I can establish the position of my two rails on the gantry itself and then also I got to figure out the offset of the router bit so the router bit lands in the center and the gantry is offset from there but there's that and then it's going to be just a nightmarish proposal of setting the gantry temporarily and then running a guy coming down from it with a pen on that guy as, as a fixed point, in, relative to nothing, but a fixed point. And then I can run this deck forward and back and I can establish a line which is in relation to these two rails. I can have a line in relation to its line of travel. And then from that line, I can square off, square off, and square the gantry to that line. And then I can also square the gantry, plumb the gantry this way, off of the deck. And that's probably going to be a whole day job, just getting that gantry plumb and, and square to everything. I should have some fudge room. I should be able to loosen these rails and kink them I wish I had two hands here kink them together in theory so I can change this so once the gantry is set because that's a fixed gantry it's set in stone once it's welded it's welded um, if I have to fudge one axis to another axis I I have oversized holes on my mounts so I can I can change this and get it to go straight so uh so there you go basically um a crap load of steel uh quadruple the weight i mean just now not even anything else on it it's easily quadruple the weight of the old one just massive 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 chunks of steel everywhere big bolts holding it a lot of a lot of a lot of weld and um one incredibly heavy solid thing wait till there's eight cinder blocks sitting there it's gonna be phenomenal 
So there you go. There is the sliding table. I got a gantry to build. I got a Z-axis to build. To build uh, more on its way. But uh, I can tell you this. I, I'm doing it. This is the correct way to do it. Um, the last way I did was the incorrect way. <laughs> Ding!